In four to five billion years, the entire night sky will be transformed by a galaxy that's a hundred thousand light years wide. Yet the Andromeda galaxy is coming, and we are directly in its path. This isn't sci-fi, this is NASA confirmed. So what happens when two galaxies collide? Right now we're just chilling in the Milky Way, our spiral galaxy home to an estimated 100 to 400 billion stars, and at least one planet with Wi-Fi. Meanwhile, about 2.5 million light years away, the Andromeda Galaxy is headed straight for us at 250,000 miles per hour. That's fast enough to get from here to the moon in less than two hours. And this isn't a maybe, this is happening, guaranteed. Astronomers use the Hubble Space Telescope to track Andromeda's motion, and the data says impact in about four to five billion years. Which means we've got time, lucky you. About 3.9 billion years from now, the Milky Way and Andromeda finally cross paths. But don't expect some explosive Michael Bay style crash. Galaxies aren't solid objects, they're mostly empty space. If the sun were a tennis ball, the nearest star would be another tennis ball 700 kilometers away. So when galaxies collide, it's more like two swarms of bees passing through each other than two trucks crashing. The stars don't crash, gravity does the heavy lifting. As Andromeda sweeps through, gravitational forces distort both galaxies. Spiral arms will stretch and warp, stars will be pulled into new orbits, and massive clouds of gas will collide. These collisions trigger intense waves of star formation, lighting up the sky with newly formed stars. It may look chaotic, but this is how galaxies grow and evolve. It's not destruction, it's transformation. So what happens to us? Earth, the planet, will likely survive the merger. Life on it will not. Even in the middle of a galactic collision, the space between stars is so vast that different stellar collisions are extraordinarily unlikely. Our solar system could be nudged into a new orbit, or even flung to the outskirts of the galaxy or beyond. If that happens and we drift too far from the sun, Earth would become a frozen rock in space. No sunlight, no warmth, no chance for life. But long before that happens, Earth has another more personal deadline. Around the same time, the sun will exhaust its hydrogen fuel, expand into a red giant, and begin the final stages of its life. Mercury and Venus will be consumed. Earth may escape being swallowed, but even then, the rising temperatures will boil away the oceans, strip away the atmosphere, and sterilize the planet. Even if Earth survives the merger itself, life on it will end before. So no, the galactic collision doesn't kill us, the sun does. And yet the show goes on. Roughly a billion years after that first pass, at the heart of it all, the final boss fight. In the center of the Milky Way, we've got Sagittarius A-star. A respectable supermassive black hole clocking in at about 4 million times the mass of the sun. But Andromeda, it's hauling a heavyweight black hole, possibly over a hundred million solar masses. As the galaxies collapse into each other, these two monsters begin their slow spiraling dance, orbiting for millions of years, closing the distance with every pass, like cosmic titans circling in silence, until finally, they merge. The collision unleashes a blast of gravitational waves, powerful enough to ripple across the fabric of space-time itself. The spiral arms, those elegant sweeping structures, start to break apart. They twist, unravel, and slowly disappear. What was once orderly becomes messy, but out of that mess, something new takes shape. A single, massive, elliptical galaxy. Simpler, rounder, the end result of billions of years of cosmic rearranging. Astronomers call it Melchiemeda, or Melchidromeda, if they're feeling dramatic. And it won't just be the Milky Way and Andromeda in the mix. See, both galaxies are surrounded by smaller satellite galaxies, like the melangelic clouds orbiting us, or M32 and M110 hanging around Andromeda. These galaxies will likely get pulled into the merger too, adding their stars into the mix. In fact, all of this is happening within our neighborhood of space, the local group a cluster of around 80 galaxies bound together by gravity. When the two giants collide, they won't be alone. They'll be dragging their whole cosmic neighborhood along for the ride. Milky Dromeda will be rounder, less flashy than a spiral galaxy, but stable, settled, the cosmic equivalent of retirement. 
Two galaxies once separate now fused into one giant monument to time, gravity, and transformation. Earth might still be there, just a lifeless rock orbiting a dying star, drifting quietly through a galaxy that barely remembers its name. Here's the thing though, this kind of thing isn't rare. In fact, it's how galaxies evolve. Out in deep space, galaxies are constantly colliding, merging and reshaping each other. It's more like the universe's version of a slow motion handshake that sometimes ends in a bear hug. The universe is full of evidence. Twisted remnants of old galaxies, stretched out spiral arms, and long trails of stars pulled from their original paths. These are the lasting marks of collisions that played out over billions of years. Those big, hazy elliptical galaxies you see in telescope photos, they weren't always like that. Most of them started out as spirals, rotating through space. But over time, gravity brought them too close to another galaxy. One slow motion collision later, the structure was gone. No more spirals, no more symmetry, just a giant featureless cloud of stars. A quiet reminder of a collision that happened billions of years ago. So, what's happening to the Milky Way and Andromeda is part of a bigger story. No drama, no disaster, just gravity doing what it always has done, shaping the universe one collision at a time. Another chapter in a universe that never sits still. Let's say against all odds, you're there to witness it all. Before the galaxies collide, the night sky will begin to change dramatically. Around 2 billion years from now, Andromeda will no longer be a faint blur on the edge of vision. It'll grow larger, brighter, a glowing spiral slowly dominating the sky. Eventually, it'll span a portion of the sky far bigger than the full moon, visible as a sprawling arc overhead. As the galaxy starts to pull on each other, the sky reshapes, constellations drift out of alignment, gas clouds collide, triggering the birth of new stars, long streams of stars, tidal tails, stretch across the sky like fingerprints left by gravity. The night won't look still anymore, it'll feel alive, shifting, pulsing, changing, a rare cosmic transformation, visible over millions of years. That is, of course, assuming anything is still here to see it. So yeah, two galaxies colliding, it's not chaos. It's not explosions or fiery crashes, it's gravity, quietly doing its thing over billions of years. It's majestic, slow, relentless, and it's a reminder that the universe isn't static. Nothing sits still, everything moves, everything changes, even the galaxy will call you home. We like to imagine space as this cold, empty forever, but it's more like an ocean. Galaxies drift, they crash, they merge, they reshape each other, like living things just moving on cosmic time scales. And the fact that we can know this, that we figured out what the sky will look like 4 billion years from now, before it even happens, it's kind of amazing. We might not be around to see the full story play out, but we're here for the opening scene. And honestly, that's a pretty special place to be. So next time you look up at the stars, remember, this whole sky, it's temporary. The universe never stays still. If you enjoyed this trip through the future of our galaxy, go ahead and hit that like button. And subscribe for more science stories, cosmic what-ifs, and the occasional light existential crisis. Catch you next time, and as always, stay curious.